Das reicht für mich, ja? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mickey Mouse tells us it's time to start. It's off. No. Okay. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. God's calling. I'm turning it off. Just that reminds me. My dad's all the time back here. Just reminding me of the song. Our opening hymn this morning is in your bulletin. I've pulled out a couple of songs that are on the organ that we don't have in our hymnal. Our first one may be familiar to some of you. If there's been a request that we do some, some uh, additional image. And so, image, imagery, hymns, hymnery. Come on. <laughs> Please stand. <laughs> She found wisdom and peace. 
let us pray for Elizabeth. For Queen Elizabeth and her exceptional reign, for her deep affection for her people, for her lifelong desire to serve the common good, for her humility and grace, hard work and dedication, we give you thanks, living Lord. Be with the king and the members of the royal family as they mourn the loss of a mother and grandmother, as well as a friend and monarch. In the royal places, crown them with your loving kindness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And today is the 21st anniversary in remembrance of the tragic events of 9-11. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of all people and all nations, it is with sorrow and apprehension that we remember the tragic events that occurred this day. We lift to you in prayer those who died in the Twin Towers, at the Pentagon, and on United Airlines Flight 93 in Shanksville. We entrust them to your loving care. Console their families, friends, and all who mourn this loss, and in the hope that all who trust in you find peace and rest in your kingdom. We pray for those who courageously responded to provide aid and comfort to afflicted. May their painful memories of that day be healed and transformed into strength and positive resolution. Enable us, dear Lord, to put an end to fear by resolving to live lives that are based on respect for one another, by resolving to abide in a peaceful manner and never settle disputes in our lives in our violent way, by resolving not to fall into the trap of blaming entire ethnic groups, races, or religions in response to acts of hostility by resolving that justice, not revenge, shall prevail in our world. Let us remember the memory of the nearly 3,000 individuals who died on September 11, 2001. By resolving with your help, Almighty God, to truly live this way so that you may be glorified and your love may be known to others through us. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Holy Communion Rite 2 begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Holy Eucharist Rite 2. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Page 356, the Gloria, together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord of God, Lamb of God, you can take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of my Father. You see my prayer. For we alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Messiah. You alone are the Messiah. Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's Word. Make me 
we hear of joy and gladness, that the body of the broken may rejoice. I have released from my sins, and brought out all my enemies. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. <coughs> Our second lesson comes from the first letter to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. The reading can be found in your online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from 1 Timothy, chapter 1. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. As you are able, please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes the sinners and eats with them. Then he told them this parable. Which of you, having one hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he finds it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. And so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over ninety-nine persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins, when she loses one of them, does not light a lamp and sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she, found, when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. So I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord. Please pray with it for me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. Father God, may only your words be spoken and your words heard. This we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lorenzo, why don't you crank me down? Just a bit. If I get excited, the people in the first row are going to need earplugs.
The saying is sure and worthy of acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and I add even more so than Paul of whom I am the foremost. There is a thing that runs through all of our readings this week and that our God is a God of grace and mercy because look who he chooses to do his work here on earth. Every Sunday morning when I get up and look in my mirror and going, God, did you really choose me to do this? And I know there's some in the congregation who are also asking that very same question. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. And you know what? And that's okay. Because if we can ask the question, then we can live inside the grace and mercy that God has extended to us, like he has extended to all of the writers and to the recipients of uh, Jesus' message in our gospel. Old Testament starts off with Moses. I got notes. He chose Moses, an abandoned child, who was put in the Nile to escape the ravages of a mad Pharaoh, drawn out of the water of the Nile, put into that same Pharaoh's house, and lived the majority of his life as a lie. Now, you know that's going to twist your thinking there on down the line. But at some point in time, the conscience of God spoke to this man, and Moses became a murderer when he killed a slave master who was beating the Hebrews, his very people. He was running away from the evil that he had done when he encountered God on the mountain in the burning bush. And he was terrified. And he was a stutterer. He was a man of absolutely no account, but God chose him nonetheless to intercede on the behalf of the people of Israel. Why should the Egyptians say that it was with evil intent that he brought them out of the brought them to kill them on the mountains? And to consume them from the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath and change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. This person who nobody else would give two thoughts about, interceding for us, this person who was a murderer, whose life was a lie, God showed mercy and grace to, to lead his folks on one of the greatest pilgrimages ever. God chose Saul, who ultimately became writer of two-thirds of the New Testament. You remember who Saul was. He was at the stoning of Stephen, the first martyr. He held the coats of the men who were throwing rocks at them. He was standing there going, yeah, throw another one, throw another one. And as if that wasn't enough, as a Pharisee in charge of leading the people and helping them worship by imposing upon them all of the laws that made it absolutely impossible to come into the temple to worship because you had to be perfect like the Pharisees, you had to be perfect like Paul, you had to follow his rules. God struck him down, made him blind, opened his eyes so that he could then be an apostle. Of all of the things that Paul did, he said, he chose me. God showed him grace and mercy. Jesus was showing grace and mercy to the tax collectors and the sinners. Those folks that nobody wanted to deal with, you remember the tax collectors, Matthew was a tax collector. 
He was sitting in a booth with a Roman guard and the people would come up and show them their accounts and he was the one who was in charge of making sure not only did he collect enough taxes from the Romans from his own people blessing, but he was also enabled to extort whatever it was that he wanted to for his own lifestyle. If you've seen the show The Chosen, and you look at Matthew's representation in that show, you can tell that A, he was not a happy camper. That he had to be guarded when he went from point A to point B and that he had lived particularly well. Not because he earned the money, but because he thought he was entitled to it and he took what he could. Tax collectors were hated even more so than we love the IRS today. Oh, yeah. And other sinners. Jesus was sitting with them at table and the Pharisees were like, how can you do this? Because his father and he were demonstrators of grace and mercy and explained to him the necessity and the joy that takes place when one sinner comes back home The fact that we are all here today tells me one of two things. One, you recognize that this is a hospital for broken folk, that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. Or something else. <laughs> and I'm not sure what that other something else is. But when we come to the recognition and understanding that we need someone to help us, something to do something for us that we cannot do for ourselves, and we throw ourselves on the mercy of God, the heavens rejoice. The heavens sing out when a person who is lost like the sheep come home. We're kind of like the sheep when we get lost. Because we look on the other side of the fence and go, man, that grass is greener over there. That's got to be tasty. Amen. Right? Look at that valley way over there. Nobody's eating over there. If I wander over into that valley, I'm going to have all the grass that I want. We look at other things and other places and like sheep we wander off the coin didn't do much to wander off it just probably fell and rolled and landed someplace it wasn't really active in its getting lost but the sheep wanders we wander we take a look at what's new and what's bright and what's shiny and we listen to voices other than God's voices and we meander on off and pretty soon, we have wandered so far, we look around and we have no idea where we are. We have no idea how to get home. And then that's in the moment when most of us get on our knees, or we're sitting in our bed, or we're on the floor, curled up in the fetal position, crying out, God, come save me. Help me. Find me. Lift me up. Because I can do nothing. In the 12-step program, it's that point where you make that declaration, I have a problem and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. It is in that moment when we are most ready to hear that voice, to reach up and see that hand of Jesus reaching down to pull us home. Whenever we do that, the angels rejoice. It's kind of like uh, it's a wonderful Christmas. It's a wonderful world. It's a wonderful life, right? When the angel gets his wings and he hears the bell, right? That's what I envision when somebody comes home and says, Lord, I need you. And Jesus says, Here I am. I surrender to you. Come on home. I can just imagine there's a a chorus of bells and angels singing hallelujah. 
But there's also one thing that I recognize in that as many of us who have come in here because we know that we need Jesus and we know that we need some healing, not everybody's made the same commitment to serve him. Something my Old Testament professor, Dean Ulrich, told us our very first day in seminary. He was Presbyterian, and he liked to talk very slowly to make sure that we heard every word that he said. And he was not an old man when he did this. And he told us that he wanted to make sure that we recognize that not everybody sitting in the pew has a relationship with Jesus. That was something that shocked me the first time I heard it. I figured if they didn't have a relationship with Jesus, what were they doing in church? But I've come to find out over years, I have met lifelong Episcopalians, people who were born, raised, baptized in the church, that were uncertain as to whether they were going to be in heaven at the end of days. They did not know that they could be, that they would be, that their names were written in the book of life. Statistics say there is probably one or two in the congregation today who are uncertain as to whether their next breath after their last breath here will be with Jesus. These readings today tell me that today is the day that we might need to remember, that we might need to recommit. There might be someone out there who has not committed themselves for the first time. We read in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. And I suspect there may be one or two of you out in the congregation who have not confessed and have not acknowledged that Jesus rose from the dead. So with that in mind, please close your eyes. And answer in your heart this question. Have you committed to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Do you believe in your heart that God rose him from the dead? That Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to save me, to save you. If there's any doubt, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Son. Born of a virgin who lived a perfect life here. Sinless. Following you, Father God. He died on a cross carrying my sins. And in doing so, offered to me eternal life. I confess that I need him. I confess.
that's what I need you. I surrender my will to you, Lord Jesus. I confess and proclaim that you are Lord. There can be no other. And I believe that you rose from the dead. You will come again in glory to judge us. And I will stand before the Father with you by my side. For these things I praise you and give you thanks. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If this is the first time you had ever made that prayer, I would really love it. if you would see me afterwards so I can let you know just what all you signed on to. <laughs> because although we make this prayer and we make this declaration and we think life is going to be easy from here on out, mm, yeah, not so much. I can't tell you that it will be easy, but I can assure you and promise you as sure as I'm standing here that it will absolutely be worth it. And to that end, let us turn to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us stand and affirm what we know to be true as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. When I ask you, my brothers and sisters, fellow children of God, what do we believe? Together? We believe in one God, the Father of all maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God. Life for life, true God for true God, begotten not made, but one being from God. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and that was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, according to his prescriptions. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world.
prayers of the people for the season of Pentecost are Form 1 and starts on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer. With all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jerry our, and Michael, our bishops, Daniel and Scott, our priests, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, Greg and Michelle, our governors, for the leaders of the nation, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a seasonable weather, and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good of earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Greg, Yolanda, Mark, Diane, Little Ben, Arden, Maggie, Brianna, Elsie, Martin, Charlotte, Jan, Ariel, Bob, Terry, Holland, Hardy, Isabel, Gary, Beverly, William, Keith, Maria, Laura, Bridget, Abby, Estella, and Jeff. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, Let's pray for the standing committee and trustees of the property. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the military, both home and abroad, for those in law enforcement, firefighters and first responders, educators and healthcare workers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Please add your intercession, prayers, and petitions at this time. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Luke and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O oh Lord our God. O 
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. On page 360 together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done done. We have not loved if you are all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of our name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. Le bulletin, please read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest it. And if you do that, then I don't have to write, to, uh, repeat it out loud to take up time during the service. Um, of important note, uh, immediately following the service after a coffee and bio break, we will be starting our vestry meeting. So the vestry meeting is open to anybody who would like to stick around and find out how the work of the church is going. Um, I will report this at the best route, but I will also let you know that last Friday, I, uh, along with a couple of members of the congregation, met with uh, Norbert, and Norbert was the gentleman who assaulted the church with the noose and the doll out front. Uh, we had a meaningful conversation. Um, I got the only two questions asked that I wanted to, and one of them was, how did he get here? And the sign down on Country Club and Upper Valley and, and uh, West Side, he, as he was driving over to the Women's Reproductive Clinic, he saw the sign. And his goal was to try to get all of the churches within a six mile radius so enraged at the Women's Health Care Center that we would all storm the place and force them to close. Well, that's not working out so well for him. Um, why us? We just happen to be in the neighborhood. And the other question is, is, is he going to coming back? No. We 
need to keep on doing with the good work that we're doing, supporting life and supporting women who find themselves in difficult positions, supporting families to make sure that they stay together, and raising up of the young people. I told them that we will never respond to violence with violence, that this is a church of love, and we will continue to be that way in a place of healing. Birthdays and anniversaries, we got any? Our grandson Justin. Our grandson Justin turned, turned 21. Wow. Yes, he and our, grand, and our granddaughter turned 21 November. in November. So we're going to have two out in, well, the good thing is, is they're in California, right? He's in, off, he's in the, the Air Force and she's trying to be a, a homemaker. And because they live in Monterey, even though they turned 21, they can't afford to do anything anyway. So that's good. <laughs> Happy birthday, Justin. Any announcements for the good of the congregation? Our last we are, we are missing, we're going to be losing a couple of our faithful members of our congregation. Uh, their nomadic life is calling them on the road again. Um, so we need to send them out in prayer. We don't say goodbye. We, we, we don't say goodbye. What we do is we commission you and send you off in prayer. And actually, there is one other person that we've done this to more than you, and that would be Glenn Green. Okay, because she's been a college student and she comes and goes, and every time she leaves, we. And it's not goodbye. It's see you later. Yeah, see you later. <laughs> because we know that uh, God willing that you'll be back in time for Christmas. Right? So, hey, we're good. Yeah, good season coming up. Uh, by the way, who are you? Pat Bart. Everybody say, hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. And who are you? Ron Bart. Everybody say, hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Nice. <laughs> no, later, Ron. Later, on, We'll see you later, Ron. Oh, that he's never heard that before. <laughs> Let us pray, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these, your servants, and we thank you for their presence among us. And we had asked that as they uh, soldier down the road, that your angels protect the wheels uh, on the camper and the wheels on the truck, that they continue to go round and round and not walk, 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 walk. That the blue smoke stay inside the engine and doesn't come out, which is an indication of the problem. And that as they travel, that they are blessed with the opportunity to share your grace, mercy, love, and uh, and hope to all who may meet. be with them this day and keep us all close together. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission, for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, together we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread, this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son, through your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Luke and all of your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creations, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but thou art for the kingdom, and the power, and the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host, we are his guest. The table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty. Please come forward to the table of grace. The intinctors first, and the drinkers from the common cup after.
Page 366, page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and heavenly God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, our Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Our closing hymn. Rather patriotic in nature, given this, given this 9 11 anniversary, it's on the other side of the handout.
hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.